Well, good evening. Welcome to tonight's show. A hot topic for you. BC's budding, budding marijuana industry. Who thought that up? What do you think? Should uh, pot be legalized? If so, for what purposes? With me in studio, we have Mark Emery from the BC Marijuana Party and David Malmo Levine, a cannabis consultant. Not cannibal, cannabis consultant. Later in the show, we'll have uh, Corporal Rial Marin uh, from Crime Stoppers, so please join us with your calls. If you're going to get your calls in, I would suggest doing it right now. 1 866 Now TV 10. I expect a lot of phone calls on this program tonight. Hot topic. It is a little hard for me to be serious, to start things off, with uh, someone who is from the marijuana party. That is a little bit like talking to somebody from the booze party or from talking to somebody from the, uh, you know, the, the, the snuff party. I mean, why the marijuana party? I mean, you know, I know you're, you're trying to, you have an agenda here, mm -hmm. but why did you form this thing, Mark Emery, called the marijuana party? Well, people who form political parties are always on the, uh, the outs in the political establishment. In other words, we didn't feel we were being represented, so we set up a movement whereby we could coalesce our forces and show that there's a concentration of support there and that hopefully we would attract other political parties to want our influence with those voters and uh, appeal to us, which is now happening because on, on my POT TV website, Jack Layton, the leader of the NDP, has a direct appeal to our viewers. And on every show, we've let him do this, and he clearly has articulated our point of view. He believes in legalization. He wants to bring this forward in the next federal election. He's looking for our voting block of people 18 to 40 who have given their votes to us, 54,000 in the last BC election. And uh, the parties these days are looking for new alliances and they're looking for voter groups that haven't supported them previously. And so they're appealing to our membership to join the NDP. And we'd like to see that for more political parties. But that's why we formed a political party. Because so instead of just having an organization, you thought this is the best way of getting your message out or to create... Uh, alliances. Well, it's a, it's a revolution procedure. We've got our own media, POT TV, Cannabis Culture Magazine, a political organization to participate in elections, uh, you know, various facilities. So we try and participate in every possible way to educate and convince the public that prohibition is something that ought to be repealed and benefits no one in Canada. And uh, political party is an extension of anybody who feels excluded from the political process. All right. Uh, David Malmo Levine. That's Can I right. just call you David? Sure. All right, let's do that. You're a cannabis consultant. Yes. All right, what is that? Well, I teach people about uh, pot. I, I teach people about pot on pot TV and in uh, Cannabis Culture, the magazine, and in my own magazine, Pot Shot. And uh, sometimes I find myself in court teaching judges about uh, various legal principles that uh, apply to cannabis, like the harm principle. Uh, you should not harm the harmless. So if, uh, say for example, I could go to court and prove that uh, if cannabis was distributed properly, like deal dealt properly, then it, uh, it wouldn't hurt anyone. And I present that evidence. And right now, I'm waiting to hear back from the Supreme Court of Canada. Um, and uh, if they agree with my arguments, then everybody in Canada can grow mountain sides full of marijuana with complete protection of the Constitution and of the police. So what got you going in this? Why did you decide to become a cannabis consultant? Well, I started kind of being a full-time cannabis activist back in the early 90s because I felt that uh, to solve this problem, to deal with this issue, not only could we end uh, the biggest war in the world, really a civil war in every country, which is the drug war, um, but uh, we might be able to reintroduce herbal medicine back into our kind of uh, our tools of medicine and uh, look at, at cannabis and, and all the other herbs and not as vices or sins, but rather as tools that can help us if we use them properly. And uh, those are two noble causes I could, you know, go to my deathbed thinking, well, I did really help and improve the world if I just had a part in that, those projects. All right, Mark Emery, this might be a question you've never had before. Oh, maybe you have. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you've had all kinds of questions on this. Nothing would be a surprise to you. 16-year-old young person comes up to you and says, I'm thinking of smoking pot. What are the dangers? Oh, well, that's a good question. Uh, I don't usually get that question from 16-year-olds. Usually I get 16-year-olds coming up and want to smoke pot with me. And so they've already, they've already broached that kind of decision in their own self. Well, the danger is... Are you in favor of a 16-year-old smoking pot? Well, look at it this way. Most people my age who are 45 started smoking when they were 14, and we don't regard it as uh, our, the beginning of a drug addiction. We begin it as our, our passage, a rite of passage that we were always totally illuminated when we first smoked marijuana, and we are See, well... This is confusing, and we'll come back to this a little bit, because in the legalization of marijuana and some of the material that you put out, I thought you were saying that at least we could then control it so that uh, 
people uh, say like they do with cigarettes, and uh, they don't really control oh, the big, that real the well. Biggest control but I didn't think that you wanted young people smoking. Oh no, no, it's quite all right if young people smoke marijuana. The key thing is young people shouldn't be in the business of marijuana. And see what happens is you have young people who discover that if they handle marijuana or grow marijuana, they can deal with fabulous, lucrative sums of money, but at the great risk of going to jail or perhaps dis you know involving themselves with organized crime. The danger is not in young people smoking marijuana. The, the danger is young people getting corrupted by large amounts of money which they shouldn't be getting at 15, 16, 17 years old because they're dealing with each other. Students don't buy from older people hanging around the schoolyard like me. They say, oh, we should punish people that sell to kids. Hey, it's kids selling to kids. If you're 15 and 16 and you smoke marijuana, you know 10 other kids who smoke marijuana, well, it's going to occur to you, well, maybe I should sell it, make a good living this way, and, you know, get involved in the criminal justice system and meet other kind of dealers who are going to supply to me and perhaps run into organized crime. That's the danger I see for young people. I don't see danger in smoking marijuana because there's 165 million people around the globe who smoke marijuana regularly. Regularly. And, you know, there are millions and millions of teenagers who are going to smoke marijuana, and they'll be on fine. On the other hand, though, Mark Emery, and I'm going to have to take the other side on this tonight simply because of the, uh, you know, have a little bit of discussion on this. Uh, and I have worked with drug and crisis centers. I've worked with this. I mean, we have a huge problem with a lot of people that are involved in drugs and are doing a lot of breaking and a lot of entries. Oh, yeah. I sure. also have. Uh, well, property uh, crime will run rampant from prohibition, but not from drug use. Remember, if these drugs were legal, well, nobody could be debated. Nobody would commit crime for these drugs if they were legal. And in Holland, they don't. And if I might jump in for a second, sure. I think there are a couple legitimate concerns that parents have if they're, they find out their children are smoking Can we come pot. back and take those legitimate? Because we do need to take a Absolutely. break and pay for the show tonight. Sure. So we'll do that. All right. Uh, all right. You know where we're going with this. Your questions. Everything is open right here tonight. Uh, bring it on. one eight six six now tv 10 We're going to talk uh, the legalization of marijuana and a number of other things in regards to pot. It was good if it wasn't going to, uh, if it's not being used for, uh, convert the money into money for hard drugs. I, I just bother me one way or another, to be honest. Some people think it's, it's great. Like, there's a lot of people that do, you know, pot, but, uh, I don't agree with it. I think we should make it legal and get all those billions of tax dollars into the provincial treasury and then we can make good use of it. I didn't care about it. <laughs>